All right, well, Jennifer's with me today. We spent the, the night last night at uh, Bed and Trains, Airbnb and Tashby, Mike and Shell Butters. And here, I'm gonna turn out the sun a little bit. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna go scrounging around today and, uh, sorry about toothpick, but we're gonna go scrounge around a little bit today. I don't know if well, there's a train coming up right now, but I don't know if we'll catch him. We'll take her up and show her. We'll drive between, a, uh, between the loop and uh, Marcel, where it goes back out onto the freeway at Tatchby Creek. So you can see that. If we catch a train, we do. I don't think we'll catch this one coming up. I think he's going to be ahead of us. All right, here we go. this road up to way long. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, I said I'm, um, it's gonna be a while. I'm actually pacing a train right now, so when I get done with that, I'll uh, stop and get the R RMCC number and call and give it to you, and, or just text it to you, and you can call and let them know about it. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Bye. miles per hour. Let move out ahead of us here because there's crossing up here. I have to wait for him anyway. Ten miles an hour. Yellow over yellow on this track, which means that right now he is not clear to the other end of Marcel. I guess he would be cleared. That's just a two position signal. One thing's for sure we'll find out. I tell people all the time it is amazing the things, the little details 
that uh, that I've forgotten in the five years since I retired, or about four and a half, it's not been quite five, but and COVID hasn't helped with that. We didn't have, uh, the only place on my territory up the valley we had position signals at when I was working up the valley with the new system was at Biola, uh -huh. where double track ended up in Fresno. And uh, I never did get familiar with how the approaches to those were. This guy certainly does not appear to be slowing down. You heard that interaction, me and somebody on the phone. That was my subscriber, Daryl Doherty from uh, Australia. So you will probably have already seen the video that, they, that he and I spent together, but he's up on Cajon Pass at Summit, and he said there were a bunch of containers with the doors open, so I stopped here and Pulled up the Union Pacific RMCC number. And uh, texted it to him. I don't see a train coming the other way on the other track, so. They're good to go. <clears throat> right here is where tunnel 11 used to be and this is also i've said in a couple of my videos where the west end of marcel's when they got rid of tunnel 11 they extended the siding of marcel down to here and in 2015 they double tracked all of this and got rid of the essentially the siding at Waylong and the siding at Marcel connected them and made it a section of double track. <clears throat> I get asked a lot about if they're ever going to double track or if there are any plans of doing double track anywhere else, getting the whole mountain done. I know they'd love to do it, but. At this point, it, it wouldn't be cost effective. It would interrupt operations too much. The environmental impacts would probably have trouble. Uh, they, it's my understanding, they were preparing to do the stretch between Woodford and Rowan and the uh, Chavez National Monument UFW people down there protested it on grounds of uh, wildlife or something like that I, I don't know and uh, they just they're, they just they're not gonna do it and uh, up here uh, but say between Caliente and Bealville between Bealville and Cliff between Cliff and Rowan and between Marcel and cable tunnels are the issue they would have to daylight those tunnels build more uh, shelf on the edge of the canyon to put another track on and i just don't see that happening that back in the late 80s to resemble a 
railroad building, but uh, he passed away. His heirs uh, took it over, and my understanding is uh, they ended up uh, letting it go into foreclosure. It sat vacant for a while, and uh, these uh, people that live there now have lived there for quite a while. Nope, that's not an Airbnb. You wouldn't have, even if it were, you wouldn't have much of a, uh, a viewing area. The trains would pretty much be able to just see what, whatever was right in front of you. And go up to uh, Beds and Trains, Airbnb in Tehachapi, Mike and Cheryl Butter's place. That overlooks uh, the lower end of cable and you get a lot of uh, view and sound of the trains going going up the going up the canyon there through cable it's really cool and there is also I, I don't know the name of the other guy uh, uh, Mike I can't remember but uh I've talked to him about doing a place just on the other side of the Butters, on the next uh, little point over. He actually has a Union Pacific caboose. You saw that in the uh, things to know about rail fanning on to Ashby video. And uh, he's amenable to having me come up there and do a little video at his place. And uh, we are doing a video this weekend because we're staying at the uh, Butters place there, Bed and Trains, as their guests. Very cool of them. But at both of those ones, you have a lot more, uh, you can see the tracks quite a ways away. I don't you probably see about a mile or so of track from either one of them. Mike and Cheryl's place looks down toward the west end of Cable, the end of Double Track. And the uh, guy with the place with the caboose, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name right now, but that one looks uh, south toward the cable, over the cable crossover that way. a drive up this road a few years ago but I was uh, I did that I was holding my gimbal and it didn't it was okay but it didn't turn out that well because the gimbal is okay for some things but for stuff like this I had to keep trying to readjust it for the elevation going up and going down and angles and stuff like that so it uh, this one will be a lot better and back then, I didn't have very many subscribers, so not a lot of people, probably a lot of people probably didn't see that, so. Give everybody a chance to see this. And right there, that curve they're going around right now, that is where the big derailment was. Uh, last January, January 2023. I'll put a link in the description below to the uh, playlist for derailments and you can check out all the derailments. That curve oiler that I just went by is where I shot the video about how curve oilers work and that was the first video of mine that went over 100,000 views.
kind of surprised me, but people like to know how things work. And I hope all of you are use the playlists. If you're not sure, scrounge around on your on the main page of your channel when you go to look for on someone's channel and find their playlists. Click on playlists and it'll take you to theirs. And I use playlists. So you don't have to sift through so many videos to try to find something you're looking for. Alright, well, I'm going to stop right here and walk up to the, uh, turn around actually, and go back up, show Jennifer where the old tunnels were. Once this train goes around that curve, it goes into tunnel 14 and the road ends right over to the left. But we'll complete this drive up to the freeway when we're done with our excursion to the tunnels. Okay, for those of you who saw the piece that I did on the history of the tunnels and then the correction video that I did on these two tunnels in particular, you'll see that right there where that curve oiler is, when the tracks originally came around the, that curve there, they kept curving around to our left this way. And... Uh, they ran along the edge of that hill right there. These are all ties that they had to replace after the derailment. And it ran, see the little bit of the cut right there? And the tracks ran back here. Then they curved around this way. And that area right there that has pine trees growing on it now and some washed out places that was the west portal of tunnel 12 and then up there where that draw comes to an end is where the east portal of tunnel 12 was and it came right up that draw, right about to where we are standing would have been the west portal of tunnel 13. And it would have proceeded through this right here out that way. The tunnel had a really sharp curve. I don't know what the degree of that curve was, but it was a pretty sharp curve inside inside the hill here and uh, the tunnel would have been for the most part still inside the hill there inside this mountain you can see that this even this right here has been cut off but this is where the the hill would have part of it would have come here and that part up there would have went all the way down to the other side of where that road's cut and uh, the east portal of the tunnel would have been down there. You can see where the track starts, curves here around to the right and then curves back to the left and goes into tunnel 14 up there. That would have come pretty much straight out of tunnel 14 into tunnel 13. And they built this curve around it. They did that in 1920. And the reason they did is they didn't need those curves. Locomotives had become more powerful by then, more better tractive effort, and they didn't need those severe curves to keep the grade at uh, the 2.2 that it is there. And they just jacked this up to around 3% just between that where that uh, curve oiler was that we saw back there and up there I'm running up to a uh, tunnel 14. All right, with our little exploration segment done, we will continue on. I have heard no horns. This is a blind curve, but they have to sound the horns coming through the tunnels. So you would hear them. We've been sitting here for a while. So. And you can certainly hear them if they're coming up the hill from a long way down there. Of 
course you should never rely on things like that just in case someone's not paying attention or your hearing's not as good as you thought it was but yeah there's tunnel 14 there you can't you have to go down through the creek bed but that road's washed out Don't you wish you could have spent 40 years getting beat up on these roads? No. See how it's all washed out down there? Yeah. Now when I was down here the other day, yep, it's still there, they uh, uh, mentioned it in the video that I did the day uh, Daryl was here, that they are bringing in uh, Looks like they're staging things to do the remediation of the ground where the derailment was, mm -hmm. where they had to take all the trees out and drag everything down the hill. A lot of you asked me about that, and yes, they're going to do it, and I will try to get up here this week and one of the days and see if they're actually going to do it. If I can catch it, I certainly will. So what is this right here? That's burned. That's supposed it to keep was the just, water out? No, it was just to keep the, any debris from going down into the creek. Huh? But yeah, you can see there to the left there, they've got the those bags. I can't remember, there's a name for those things, but I can't remember what they call them. Washaways. I don't see how it's going to water that. They use them, uh, they terrace those and use them, you see them on the sides of freeways and whatnot. When I was up here the other day, there was a a pickup down here. But I don't see anybody over there now to go talk to. But that was the uh, Raging Tehachapi Creek that we just went through. That road right there straight ahead of us goes all the way up to Cable. But as you heard me say it was it's washed out now I don't know it's and it's badly washed out so I don't know when or if they'll even worry about getting that put back together if they need to get up in there they'll just high rail in there Fifty-eight and head back up toward Tehachapi. Sorry about just dumping you off like that. For those of you who use GoPros, you know a few of its weaknesses, and one of them is that a few seconds after you start recording uh, deals like this, the screen turns off to save battery, and that's cool. But unless you're monitoring the little flashing light up in the top of the unit that tells you that you're still recording, which is hard to see when you're driving, especially when you're blind like I am. Uh, nothing tells you that the battery has died. Nothing tells you that it has, that it has stopped recording, which it did here. And uh, here are the URLs to my PayPal and my Patreon. If you can help the channel out that way, I'd sure appreciate it. And... Keep shooting me the ideas. Drop them in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motopoet59 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. And we'll see you all later.